नहीं आ रहा है अभी तक नहीं वो आएगा उधर यस वी आर लाइव ऑन यूट्यूब नाउ एक मिनट एक मिनट डन गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स इट गिव्स मी इमेंस प्लेजर टू वेलकम यू ऑल टू आवर सेवेंथ एओ पास वेबिनार टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द बोथ कॉलम फ्रैक्चर्स व्हिच आर presumed to be the most uh, difficult fractures to deal with we have an expert panel today with dr uh, ramesh sen and dr cp das who are doyens of uh, pelvis doubler work in india and we have dr mehul acharya and dr nikhil shra from uk who have been very close friends and associates for our association of pelvis doubler surgeons and then we have dr pradeep nemade our uh, wizard with pelvis doubler surgeries and uh, myself secretary of eopas dr pranav shah Uh, over to Dr. Nikhil Shah, who is going to open with uh, the anatomical aspects of the both column fractures. Dr. Nikhil. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah. You can see the PowerPoint. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, good morning, friends. Well, good afternoon for India. so i'll uh, begin with uh, an introduction to associated both column fractures the remit of my talk is to discuss the pathoanatomy of this type of fracture so that we understand uh, what happens the mechanism of injury the subtypes um, i'll also deal with how to assess them on simple radiography and ct scans and show a couple of cases and then that will feed on to the subsequent uh, talks um everyone is familiar with the column concept of the acetabulum the anterior and the posterior columns which are shaped like an inverted y and we know the important structures such as the dome as well as the quadrilateral plate this concept is well known to pelvic acetabular surgeons letourneau defined an associated both column fracture as those fractures which isolate mutually from each other the two columns together with the related segments of the articular surface what this means is no part of the acetabulum is in continuity with the iliac wing so the only thing that is attached to the sacrum is the unfractured part of the iliac wing in his classification system he included that as an associated or as a complex type because there is more than one fracture line and in the ao classification system this is a complete articular type of fracture because effectively what you have is a floating acetabulum the acetabulum is detached from every other attachment to the innominate bone when we look at the pathoanatomy again we can see that the entire joint is displaced medially and rotated internally so that no part of the acetabulum is then attached to the axial skeleton in terms of soft tissues very interestingly what this does is often it does not completely disrupt your soft tissue envelope and so using indirect concepts like ligamento taxis you are able often to reduce the other column through a single approach and this is where it differs from the t type fracture which is often confused with the associated both column if you look carefully at the t type fracture there is a part of the acetabulum that is still attached to the ilium so in terms of the soft tissues they are often ruptured and it is very difficult in a t type sometimes to reduce the other column or the opposite fragment through an ipsilateral approach whereas in an abc the acetabulum is completely detached from the ilium we know that these are high energy injuries after road traffic accidents motorcycle accidents uh, falls from a height nowadays in elderly patients these injuries are very common in osteoporotic bone with low energy mechanism so just fall from a standing height and the whole acetabulum is imploded and you get these very comminuted abc type fractures and we are seeing some periprosthetic fractures as well in terms of how they occur the mechanism we have to understand that acetabulum fractures will depend upon the force vector that is applied to the acetabulum and the position of the leg in terms of the force vector we want to know the point of application of the force and we want to know the direction and the magnitude of the force in terms of the position of the leg what will influence the fracture is the flexion or extension of the hip 
adduction or abduction of the hip and rotation of the hip. So if your hip joint is abducted, you're more likely to get a fracture lower down in the acetabulum, in the inferior part. If the leg is neutral, then it will be generally at the medial end of the roof of the acetabulum. And if the leg is, leg is adducted, then you're more likely to get damage to the posterior superior dome of the acetabulum. In terms of flexion or extension of the hip, when the hip is flexed, typically uh, what happens in a dashboard injury for the driver or the passenger of a vehicle, the hip goes backwards and you get injuries to the posterior wall or column. And again, that depends upon whether the hip is adducted or abducted. Whereas if, hip, if the hip is extended or the, the leg is extended, then you're more likely to get superior and anterior fractures. When we look at rotation, this is quite important to understand how a both column fracture um, occurs. If the hip joint is rotated externally, and Letourneau's book explains this quite nicely, so 50 degrees external rotation, for example, you will get an anterior column or an anterior wall fracture. If the rotation is internal, then you're more likely to get a posterior column or a posterior wall fracture. And this is the typical ideal scenario where Letourneau says you are likely to get an associated both column fracture. So he resolves this force, which is applied to the greater trochanter into a component of force that goes anteriorly and posteriorly. Then the point of impact in the acetabulum and the point of impact becomes a zone of impact because of the cartilage. The adduction abduction of the hip is neutral and the rotation of the hip joint is internal by 20 degrees. And this causes both the columns to be fractured. We know that the column fractures can vary, but if you look at broad groups, there is a high type or the, the, where the fracture line exits from the iliac crest and the low type where it exits more anteriorly. And the AO group has described this type one and type two based on where the fracture line exits the anterior column. In a type one, it will exit superiorly through the iliac crest. And in a type two, it will exit anteriorly just below the anterior superior iliac spine or near the anterior inferior iliac spine. Now we know that fractures have got literally an infinite number of combinations and variations. But broadly speaking, if you look at the anterior column lesions, sometimes they can be incomplete and in the majority of the high energy injuries, they will be complete. They may involve the quadrilateral surface and you may also have marginal impaction located anteriorly or anteromedially. If you look at the lesion of the posterior column, the fracture line usually begins in the retroacetabular area at the apex of the greater sciatic notch. Then it travels through the acetabulum near the fovea, skirts the fovea and exits on the, uh, on the upper border of the obturator foramen. Sometimes the posterior column fracture can be quite low. Sometimes it can be segmental. It can be associated with a posterior wall. And in some cases, the entire uh, part of the greater sciatic notch that is attached to the sacroiliac joint can itself be fractured. And this can cause damage to the sciatic nerve as well. Now we know the basics of assessment of an acetabulum fracture by drawing these iliopectineal and ileoischial lines, and they represent the anterior and the posterior columns. So these are the three very simple questions that we can ask to see whether the fracture is likely to be a both column fracture on an AP X-ray. So the first question is, is the iliac wing broken? The second one, are the ileoischial and the iliopectineal lines broken? And the third one, is the obturator ring broken? And if the answer to the, this is yes, then you're more likely to have an associated both column fracture. And that shows the X-ray where your ileoischial and the iliopectineal lines are both broken. You have a fracture going through the conjoint ramus and also through the superior pelvic ramus. And you have a fracture of the iliac wing, which makes it an ABC type of fracture. This sign is often described in relation to an associated both column fracture. And what it is, is if you take an obturator oblique Jude view, then the extra articular portion of the remaining ileum, which is not fractured, appears like a spur. And that shows the spur sign. On a CT scan, you will typically see the fracture line going through your uh, scans through the iliac wing. And the picture on the right shows where that slice of the CT is taken. And you can see that typical fracture line going down the iliac wing into the dome of the acetabulum. And the picture on the left shows what happens when you get extensive 
comminution. Why do we need to go through all this? I think it's very important to understand the nature or the personality of an associated both column fracture. It's only when we understand the fracture anatomy properly can we then plan treatment and then we can plan our approaches. Because if your predominant displacement is anterior, then you're going to try and use one of the anterior approaches, either an ileoinguinal or a modified stopa or an ileofemoral or one of the variations and combinations. But if most of the work has to be done from the back, then you're going to use a Cocker-Langenbeck approach. And in many of these cases, to get an accurate reduction, you may have to use a dual approach. So these are some case examples just to uh, highlight the points that we have just discussed. This gentleman was in his mid 40s, uh, one of my cases from 2012, done through an ileoing vinyl approach. You can see on the x ray, it's an ABC, but you can't tell how comminuted it is. And that's only when the CT scan tells you how the dome is fractured and the degree of comminution of this associated both column fracture. And those are the coronal CT scans, which also show the level of comminution and the posterior column displacement. The 3D reconstruction, which shows how both the columns are displaced. So my philosophy for these, as far as possible, is to try and do everything through a single approach. So I've done it through an ileoing vinyl approach, move from the posterior to the anterior, correct the deformity and the, the malrotation of the iliac wing, reduce the acetabulum accurately. And you can see that's a spring plate that I used to use. So th th this case was done before suprapectineal and infrapectineal plates were commonly available. And I have to say that once you get used to this technique, um, in my practice at least, the need to use a suprapectineal or an infrapectineal plate is still fairly low. And that's the five year follow up. Another example of a gentleman in his late 50s with an associated both column fracture, which is quite comminuted. And in this case, this was dealt through with the anterior intrapelvic approach or the stopper and the first window of an ileoing vinyl. And that is the follow up at six years. Again, to buttress the medially displaced quadrilateral plate, I've used a medial plate, just a standard recon plate with a spring plate to keep it back and then an anterior column plate. So in summary, we saw in this talk how important it is to understand the pathoanatomy of this fracture, to study the fracture personality carefully so that you can plan your surgery accurately. And that's what we'll see in the next few talks of how we are going to perform the planning and reduce it accurately so we can get a good clinical result. Thank you, Dr. Nikhil. I now request uh, Dr. Ramesh Sen, sir, to share his presentation on how to deal with the low variety, that is the ones which exit between the ASIS and AIIS. Dr. Sen, sir. Good evening. Is my screen visible? Okay. It is zoomed so, uh, zoom out. Is that okay? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So basically, as Nikhil has just told about it, that we have to approve the injury mechanism in which we have three main upper one and because right now the femur had a split into three main things whenever we talk about it. And somehow this injury mechanism, the impacting force displaces all the three fragments in a different way. And why uh, Pranav has chosen to differentiate between two columns, it's very, very important. A lot of many differences happen in that Y kind of a ABC with service T kind of ABC. The Y kind of ABC you can take, it is just like entry column posterior hemi transverse, but higher than the level of a joint. And T type on the other hand is also the classical T, but higher level than the joint level. Now the displacements, how do they differ? I want to consider that thing. But overall, whenever we have got this kind of a fracture, we must consider many things. 
fracture is complete or incomplete, what is the direction and displacement, how much is the comminution, how much is the osseous quality, the patient profile as such. Now, when we are looking at complete and incomplete, you have to appreciate that this is that high level and here we are talking about a low level. So try to see that in a low level, most often we have displacement at high level, the injury went over here, it just missed going through this area and it is something still not displaced. So this has not displaced much, this has displaced a kind of an incomplete where probably you will have to complete, but here such a situation is low level, does not exist. A very important point here. Next. Where is the location of apex of deformity or the impact? This is very important. Now, if you look at this impact, whichever is here, sorry. If you look at this impact over here, it is not on the superior side. It is on the quadrilateral side because this fragment has shifted up, upwards from this fragment and medially it has opened up. Posteriorly also, but primary problem here is medial opening up of this fragment going up in the upper part. While the lower part of the fracture, it is not the medial side. It is the upper side which has opened up because this fragment did not participate in the displacement and the head has actually penetrated inside, shifting this fragment medially, not shifting this fragment upwards. So there is a fragment, which this fragment, which could be small, it could be big, but overall this structure has not changed. So whatever gap will happen, it will happen on the medial side of it, but not on the quadrilateral side of it. It will happen the upper side of it. While here it was on the quadrilateral side of it, very then. When this direction has been like this, so again repeating the point, here whenever this is, lifted up, where is the hinge? Hinge is here, wherever there was incomplete. On this hinge, this fragment is going up in this direction because of this force. Hinge is here. So this is not moved. This has displaced much more on this hinge. While here, now look at the difference. This is not displaced. Now hinge is at pubic symphysis level or something around this, and this fragment is moving. So this hinge has shifted from this side to this side. And that is a big difference between here and here. When you think of reduction, you have to appreciate that thing where the hinge is. Because here your force, again going further, here if you look, the weight bearing area, the weight bearing area stays with the anterior fragment over here, which usually gets fractured over here, but it is under this area. Here, major part lies on the medial side of it. Here, it is on the little side of it. Here, it is the medial side of it. Here, this fragment goes up with this hinge. Here, this fragment, the hinge has come down here for this fragment, and this can open up. And this is the area where the joint is there. So, if it is pushed out, the femur head is pushed out. If it is pushed down, then the femur head is pushed out. It does not depend upon this, it depends upon this fragment. Here, it does not depend upon this fragment, which is not displaced or this fragment. It particularly depends upon this fragment. So this perception where the weight bearing or anterior column is with which the femur head has gone is very important in this situation. Now, if this is to be under as a reduction, while in the upper variety or a higher variety, we have to push it down because there is a hinge here. It has to come down with the traction and with pushing in. In this situation, the hinge is here. Now it has to push out. Here it was pushing on and it is pushing out on this fragment. If you give direction and then you push it out, you get this reduction. So this is a very important perspective of a overall joint getting it to see that our force is likely to be in this direction here and in this direction here. That's a basic difference in the upper part and the lower part go towards the posterior side. When it is an upper variety, usually the fracture comes down inferiorly here. And this segment is bigger. And if you notice that this is the area where the weight bearing is there, which is not much affected, the column is down there. Here, usually in the transfers, this fracture is higher up. 
this segment is not very big and most of the time this is the crucial area which is important to get a reduction because it is just along with the weight bearing area this must be perceived so a low anterior fracture another factor which you have to see that there is likely to be a comminution front and back front could be like this and back could be like this now the question comes how to get this excess but before that we must know one another thing this fracture is very very important if it is a bigger fragment again i am going back to the previous one if this is such big a fragment you have got a big leverage to the area on the bone which is held by this femur head but if you come to this side you don't have any hold from this side all this thing has to be here so you don't you can't do anything here over there so once in this situation this fragment which is here it have any big manipulative system this fragment you will have to do some kind of a manipulation otherwise if it is a higher up we will manipulate here and get it down but here we don't have this thing so we have to specifically consider how to reduce this fragment so otherwise what happens normally when you look at the sorcil it is almost parallel most of the time it is always pointing inwards while this has to point outward this points inwards that is an important point now look at it this is that classical low level now look at the specific displacement as i said this is pointing inside this has gone medially this has not changed much this stays okay so this area is changed so we need to reduce this fragment we need to reduce this fragment and everything has gone in so our reduction has to focus on this part and this part this is a very very important perspective which we have to keep in mind when we are dealing with the low column fracture my personal preference i have been very much tuned to do with the iliofemoral approach right out most of these things so now going back if you look at this area it is nothing to do on the medial side it is to do on the superior side and this is the area which you can as i said can be seen from the up if it can be seen from the up i like to go with the iliofemoral approach and what is my reduction pointer i usually put a thick k wire or a stenman pin in this fragment so that when i pull it down i can manipulate it to come down to a horizontal level the sorcil must change because this way i get a reduction here and then for this with the traction i apply a clamp from the iliofemoral approach and i try to get it back to the position so these two along with the traction are my main emphasis now whatever are the fragments around here because i am looking from the top i can repose them into their positions and once they are reposed back i can push it down pull it down rather with the clamps over there in this situation now look over here now in this situation you see what is my first this is the situation you can see this column you can see a fracture here you can see this fragment over here i am giving traction it is neither displacing this fragment nor displacing this fragment so both quadrilateral plate is also shifted so my traction is not helping it over here so what is my next step my next step is to put this k wire derotate it so first from this finger i derotated it my next is putting a clamp and pushing or pulling it out you can see pulling it out these two things i am able to do with my iliofemoral approach i can reduce it also i can pull it out also and because i am looking from the top i can take care of those fragments which were because they are mostly facing up so i can reduce from front to back whatever i can see in this iliofemoral approach and once i have been able to do it i have this plate which i usually you i push this plate over now these days all those suprapectoral plates can be used like this that you once your reduction is achieved this has got a pro, uh, facility that it can be pushed over it and then after now here wires are holding this reduction this is pushing it up and thereafter i start the once i have been able to achieve this reduction now i put a holding screw for this plate and then i change my position of wires from front to back so that i am able to hold this fragment which i was holding from the lateral side from the front side now once i have been able to adjust it you can see as a example in some other case that this is the kind of the perception now i try to use the asymmetric clamp through the plate so now i am pushing the plate also 
holding with then k wires that is the kind of the perception i use with the asymmetric clamp and once it is done once this reduction is achieved thereafter i start passing multiple screws over the suprastable area and the longer screw into the posterior column and all these column screw i try to put it out these are the three views which i take at this stage push it out of this uh, these are the k wires holding it this is the k wire holding that part of the smaller fragment here and these are the screws which are this is purchasing giving the purchase to the upper cortex so these are the screws which are giving me purchased into the anterior so this is ap view this is the obturator view this is the iliac view in which i adjust and look at the position of the hip in these positions in this kind of a situation so now i show the cases here you see the classical description you see this fracture you see this thing you see this fracture the sorcel which was here has shifted medially so this the fracture has gone like so you can say it is crack, uh, technically a t type fracture which has actually shifted up this fracture i have just to push it out it will close it up superiorly i can see these fragments around with my iliofemoral approach you can see this is the suprastable area i have just to close this gap i have to just close this gap and i close it up by you can see now the reduction which i pulled it up i have taken the wires out now so it is back to its position the sorcel reangulated the plate is holding my first screw is holding the screw going towards the posterior side so this screw because i told you the posterior column is higher up here so i am able to manage even with the smaller screw holding this thing so with this iliofemoral approach i have been able to get this purchase and eventually this is his first post operative radiograph you can see the suture line and the iliofemoral approach this is his four months follow up subsequently you can see the outcome with heavy hip scores and all these scores and this is six months outcome in this kind of a situation so hip is back and his heavy hip score or i use mostly who quality of life score they are as best as possible in this situation another case now you look at those smaller fragments over focus over these things this is also separated this is all the sorcel is technically broken you can see over here and you can see over here the kind of a combination which goes around into this place and in this kind of a situation when i do the same thing same way because i am able to look it from the front it's a kind of a t type fracture where this this is reduced by traction this is there so i push this plate over there put the, the same kind of a screws around and it is able to give me a fixation from this approach you can see the ability of this person and you can see at 3 months he is comfortably though the, you can see that he has got some kind of a limp over there but with this kind of a situation i am able to get at 3 months a reasonable you can see his outcome at 3 months and the kind of the range of movement the kind of his uh, who quality of life score it is still at 65 not very good but then this is the outcome at this stage another case you see this is another situation you can see a fragment it is going down there this fragment is shifted out like this but this is the main fragment which has come now i can see this fragment from up i don't have anything to do on the medial side of it so i can very well push it down and pull it out that is my purpose in this situation you can see over here i have been able to pull it out push it out and my reduction comes like this and once it comes like this i put a screw here the bone quality was very bad so i pass a guide wire through the plate from outside outside of the ilium at the level of the anterior gluteal line i pass a screw from out k wire over which i pass a screw which goes into the plate and over the plate it tries compressing from inside and outside and this plates very well holds this suprastable area in this kind of a situation and with this kind of a situation you can see his post op uh, reduction and you can see him after 2 months he is able to but his his abductors are reasonably bad is a elderly man and this is him after 6 months now you can see his hip abductors also is able to stand and is able to do his hip abductors have improved by this time in this situation another case has 69 years of age again now you look at the position of the sorcel this is all common this is normal but if you look at all this combination which is here and you can see over here now it's very important this fragment now there is a lot of comminution here also now this i cannot address from this side i'll have to go towards this side because this will I, i my access is very limited here in this situation you can see down there how much is the combination posteriorly all these fragments are in position so when i apply traction they fall back into their position you can see that way but what i want to show you is that when i look from iliofemoral i only see this thing 
this I cannot see. So I'll have to go now for two approaches. I'll have to add Stopa's approach when to approach my this area along with this area. Because that small lateral window may not give me enough access, this access to this area, which I feel is very, very important in this low level of ABC fracture. I want to see it from here. I want to see from here. So I use both these approaches. So what I do is I first reduce it here, reduce it here, put a plate, a T kind of a plate so that I can buttress this area. And then I go with the Stopa's approach over here. And again, you can see this posterior column screw also. You can set the buttressing of the posterior column and coming over to the anterior column to get this kind of a reduction, which at three months I'm able to enable him to sit up. You can see the upper X-ray and you can see the down X-ray. And this is another case. Now you see here the kind of a combination of a young boy with the motor vehicle accident. A lot of fracture. You can see all that fracture going around here, 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 here and coming down to this side. It's a gross combination. And when you look at the, you can see a lot of combination here. It, the line has gone up, but there is no displacement. It's not the fracture line. It's the displacement pattern. There is no displacement pattern here. It is still sitting at that stage while the femur head has actually gone to displace this fragment and there are small fragment. So the posteriorly, you see, this is the kind of the displacement here. It is the kind of the displacement. And now if you see the cuts, you see this combination over here. You see the kind of a, a fragments over and you see this combination. This is reasonably a bad kind of a situation. So I'll have to get the, all these fragments into this position by getting this head back. So what I do, I start with the AIP approach. I try to get all those fragments back. I feel comfortable though I am not very happy with the kind of this thing which I have not been able to hold. This looks to be okay to me. I'm trying to get through AIP approach, but, and this is okay, but still this is not a very good thing which I'm looking over here, but his, this thing, he has been mobilized at that stage. He feels quite happy with the outcome at about eight months, but I am not very happy with this kind of a uh, opening up sign here. There is still a little subluxation, which I feel is not very right for a longer term. Right now, his, this thing is okay, but he's likely to have a problem. Another man, 25 years, young man. Now you look at the kind of a combination he has got. Significant combination anteriorly. It is primarily anteriorly. And then you look posteriorly also. Now this combination posteriorly is not likely to settle down from anterior approach. You will have to come posteriorly. And now this is a situation where you have to go anteriorly, you have to go posteriorly. When you are certain that you have to go on the both the sides of it, I start with the KL approach first. And in this, uh, you can see the kind of a combination anteriorly. And you can come posteriorly also, you see significant amount of this thing over here. So this combination anteriorly and then a combination posteriorly, I have a KL approach. I start with the KL approach, have the patient floppy lateral. So I'll do KL approach, then I'll shift to the iliofemoral approach. That's my perception in this case. And this is, first I reduce the posterior side, uh, uh, this thing hold the reduction over there, and then I come anteriorly with my plate over here. So posterior side is taken, I with the iliofemoral approach, I go towards the anterior side, and this way I'm able to get this fracture, all the fragments back into normal position with posterior fixation and anterior buttressing. This is subsequent x-ray, this is two months follow-up, you can see. Cochlear back, he's weak, abductors two by five, you can see over there. He can sit cross leg. That's my protocol that six weeks I hold my patient sit cross leg. Then they don't develop the hip problem. And goes very well for six months, able to have a stable amount of his stable kilometer. He doesn't have a, he's quite okay. His joint seems metal work over here. So can't see the full joint, but it is, seems to be okay, that kind of a situation. If there is a pole, you know the posterior wall fragment ABC fracture is not the posterior wall which is displaced here. This posterior wall is the undisplaced part of the posterior side as the rest of the femur head has gone back, gone medially. So once the femur head is brought back, the, the wall also is reduced. The, but if you want to fix from the anterior side, I push a ball, this thing, pointed clamp over there you can use a ACLG kind of a thing over there. And then I pass a screw from front to back, just I'm there under the image so that I'm out of joint also. I can purchase the posterior wall also. 
this is way uh, you can see this screw over here which i have passed in addition to this plate which you can see this plate and as well as this plate with the elif model approach here now this is one of my older cases done probably in 2014 with the very conventional plate at that time i used to do is the elderly man with this i was happy with the reduction i had done along with the elif model and with the fennel steel over here you can see the fennel steel this thing that i have been able to achieve reduction i used at that time i was using one spring plate another spring plate as a u plate and then to put a uh, this thing over here to buttress the brim but what is the problem in this kind of a situation even in spite of it within 6 months it had collapsed back my reduction has been lost the bone quality is weak and i had to go for a replacement with the dual mobility cup at that stage so that was a kind of a situation where the poor quality bone in this abc kind of a fracture pattern can be a show so what exactly is the difference in a high abc and low abc which is very very important you will subsequently see a high abc but in a low abc we must know you do not get secondary congruence which you see in a high abc you don't get it so conservative management is not successful in low abc which otherwise in many of the cases in high abc it is successful surgical approach now you have to see that which way you have to go in for so for me if the problem is superior i go if you have more if the problem is medial i go this thing and we might have to go for a double approach so to conclude we must appreciate what is the injury pattern we have to look what is the biomechanics what actually injury has caused and what exactly should be the reduction then you have to define it which surgical approach gives me a good access to it whether single approach i have to combine two approaches or i have to go back and front in a one go or in a serial way and we have to be guided always with the reduction maneuver under image intensifier thank you so thank you dr sen that was really an excellent overview uh, so many beautiful cases that you have shown us and uh, i think it has opened up entirely a new uh, a new concept for us that we have to look at abc in very different way the way we were looking at all abcs i think this is a very unique kind of a fracture and uh, we have to look at it in a very different way now i'll just uh, where's my screen yes so i'll just share my screen are you all able to see it yes quite <laughs> okay fine are you able to hear me properly yes yeah, sure sir okay so after uh, lower uh, low abc i think uh, we will go ahead and look at the high abc the abc fracture where the fracture line exits in the iliac crest region so as we have already uh, seen uh, just a little bit of repetition to refresh or uh, refresh this is the posterior column fracture that we see in the acetabulum and this is the anterior column fracture and when both of them coexist it becomes a associated both column fracture when the fracture line exits into the iliac crest then that is where we call it as a, a high abc so there we have the yellow outline anterior column and the red outline posterior column and the as sir has said the fracture the head is moving into the pelvis from between the two fracture lines now before we go ahead we have to understand that the high abc has a primary and a secondary fracture that is very important so the primary fracture line is over here which is the iliac crest fracture line and it is exiting Uh, into the issue will be cramus and this is the posterior part this is the anterior part but then there is also uh, there may be comminution in the primary fracture line so you may have a fracture in the iliac crest another small fracture in the iliac crest or you may have some comminution posteriorly also and then we have the secondary fracture lines which are the uh, so like anterior column is now split into two or a posterior column is having a, a fracture in the posterior wall so these are the associated injuries with the abc and they help us to decide uh, what do we do 
Apart from that, there is a head and cartilage damage which we have to look for. There may be bone impaction or split, which also we have to look for. Now, how to plan the treatment? That is important thing. So, treatment can be planned according to the assessment. And the assessment begins with the anterior column. So, like these are the two different situations where the anterior column fracture is quite different. So, what is the level of the anterior column? If the level is quite posterior, you may have to use what we call as a lateral extension of iliovingual approach. If the level is quite anterior, then it is easily accessible with the lateral window. What is the comminution and what is the displacement? You can see the rotation in these two is quite different. We also look at the dome and then we go to the posterior column. So the posterior column again presents with unique problems. It may be a large wall. It may be a wall with column uh, comminution. So uh, there may sometimes be skin lesions on the greater trochanter because of the uh, something like moral level lesion. So the posterior column assessment also helps us to decide what to do. Now, two slides about the lateral extension of ilioinguinal approach, which is not very commonly used. It is to access the lateral surface of iliac crest, and it is partly like the uh, extended iliofemoral approach. It is not for very obese or muscular patients. The limb is draped free, and there is a padding between ipsilateral buttock, and there are side supports so that when the table is tilted on our side or the opposite side, the patient doesn't move. So this is a little pictorial diagram suggesting the lateral extension of the ilioinguinal approach, where the posterior two third of the iliac crest can be exposed, and you can use clamps or any such uh, reduction maneuvers through that. And this is how the reduction can be achieved. If we tilt the patient to the opposite side, then we can uh, see the superior gluteal neurovascular pedicle over here. This is the sciatic notch, and we can also pass lateral to medial interfragmentary screws, or we can do something like this encirclage wiring through the lateral extension of the iliac balance approach. So that is one very useful tool when we are dealing with high ABC fractures. Now let's go to the primary steps. The first step in dealing with ABC fracture is dealing with the primary fracture, that is the iliac wing fracture, and we do it with the lateral window of the iliac balance approach. So what do we do? Primarily, we expose the fracture, clean the fracture, identify a keystone fragment if it is present over here. It is a small comminuted uh, fracture devoid of most of the time soft tissue. But when it fits well, it gives us an idea of the correct alignment and rotation. So the reduction is done with the help of traction, lateral and longitudinal, and reduction is done from periphery to the center. So this kind of reduction is acceptable. This kind of reduction is not acceptable. Let us all bear in mind that these fractures have a significant rotational displacement, which needs to be corrected. So you can use this kind of a clamp or a ball spike pusher to correct that rotation. After having corrected that rotation and fixing the primary fracture line, we move to the middle window. If we are dealing with, uh, if we are doing with the iliovingual approach, or sometimes if we are planning just a lateral window and stopa, then we can take the stopa approach for the next step. So next step is exposure of the pelvic brim and the dome or supraacetabular area. And once we expose and reduce it, then we can fix it with multiple interfragmentary screws or small plates or this kind of long interfragmentary screws. So that is the provisional fixation. And if a perfect reduced and fixed proximal anterior column is there, then we can move on to the next step, that is a posterior column, which will be fixed onto this template. So the step three is the posterior column. But before that, the middle window of iliovingual approach, which is a very important uh, tool for us in these kind of fractures, it helps us in many ways. It allows us to reduce and use various clamps, plates, pushers, sun spins, etc. It allows us to uh, identify and perfectly place the keystone fragment. It allows anterior column proximal as well as distal reduction and fixation. It also allows for the posterior column reduction like this. You can see a ball spike, I mean, balls, uh, ball tip clamp is used and uh, posterior column reduction is done. And we can do posterior column fixation with the spring plate as was shown by Dr. Uh, Nikhil as well as Dr. Sain. Or we can use an anti-grade posterior column screw and we can put the brim plate and do the distal anterior column reduction. So the middle window is the workhorse for all of these ABC fracture patterns. Now we come to the step three, that is the posterior column. So reduction and fixation of posterior column 
only if it is easily accessible it is not commuted and it is a high level of posterior column fracture low level posterior column fractures we will not be able to access by the eluing vinyl approach so you can use various tools like this bone spike which is done under vision of course to reduce the posterior column the spike is hitched onto the ischial spine we can use the quadrangular clamp we can use the offset quadrangular clamp we can use the asymmetric clamp any of these but most important let us all understand a proper instrumentation is a must and there is no alternative to it now how do we do the posterior column fixation so the fixation can be with parallel 3.5 or 4.5 screws like this it can be through the plate or it can be out of the plate we can use 6.5 mm cancel screw we can use a spring plate or a posterior column plate from the stopper window or we can use infra acetabular screws which is called the polman screw and these combined will give enough stability to a minimally commuted and minimally displaced posterior column the distal anterior column is the last step in fixation of these high abc fractures where the superior pubic ramus or the area of iliopectoral laminans where the fracture line is there is compressed with the help of a weber clamp and then the plate which distal screws i mean the screws into the pubis are put and this kind of additional plate also can be done if you are doing it through the stopa approach so you can have a infra pectinal plate also to give further stability to your fixation once your entire fixation is done it is very important to check for the congruity stability and intra articular hardware which is very very important now let's move to cases so this first case uh, we are looking at this female she is a 22 year old pedestrian versus car accident she had a head injury and she was unconscious and on ventilator for a week on weaning from ventilator they realized that with passive physiotherapy she was making grimace with the right lower limb movement so the x ray was taken on 12th day and this kind of fracture was diagnosed and ortho reference was done after the reference we have done a ct scan and this is what we are looking at so very obviously it is a anterior column this is a posterior column this is a little bit of comminution this is a intact fragment so this is a abc fracture of the high variety now on 15th day the patient is deemed, uh, deemed fit for surgery so what is the plan and what is the approach well i think in this situation there is no comminution posteriorly the anterior column is having comminution in this area so and the patient is having head injury so there is a high chance of ho if we go from the posterior side so i chose for eluing vinyl approach this is the core operative picture this is the anterior column which needs to be de rotated with the help of shan spin or clamps and then provisional fixation with the help of screws and wires and then posterior column fixation with screws and the brim plate this is what the sequence was done these are the per operative images of that patient we can see that a congruent hip has been achieved these are the post operative x rays so we have a stable anatomical reduced hip only by the eluing vinyl approach in this patient the patient was irritable careless because she is recovering from brain injuries so they will she, she would sit up she would lie down on the same side she would try to stand up all these things post operative phase was quite stormy but fortunately the reduction held her good quality bone and the good implant fixation was very useful in this situation this is the 9 month follow up you can note a little bit of ho formation even though we have not gone from the posterior side still there is some ho formation in the posterior part this is the patient at 9 months full function full anatomical reduction and restoration of the hip moving to the second case now you can see it is a little different kind of a case because the primary fracture line is quite posterior there is a comminution over here and there is a si joint involvement over here so this is a abc fracture with a little bit of added complexity this patient is having a sciatic now ehl edl weakness and uh, this is the fifth day from the injury that we are planning for surgery so uh, before i move forward uh, a couple of questions to the faculty i would request uh, dr sen to unmute himself sir what do you presume is the cause of the neurological deficit in this patient you have this ct scan images and you have the yes sir the displacement of the posterior column seems to be reasonable enough and this is what is at the end of uh, injury mechanism there might have been even more than that during the injury which might have reduced uh, partly so probably i think it is the stretch over the nerve which might have caused the problem 
Yes. Uh, Dr. Nikhil, uh, any, anything related to this SI joint injury? Do you think this can contribute some way to the injury to lumbosacral trunk? Sometimes it is quite difficult to define whether this is a purely sciatic nerve injury or it is a mixed lumbosacral plexus injury because the roots are very similar. And yes. like Dr. Sain said, when the posterior column is displaced that much and the sacroiliac joint is also disrupted, you are likely to have a mixed pattern injury. It is yes. quite easy to get uh, all the roots uh, stretched out. Yes. So Dr. Mehul, since you are going to talk about special situations, uh, what would be your advice to anyone who sends you this, uh, these CT scans, how he can prevent iotrogenic injury? It is an incomplete sciatic nerve injury. The patient is having a flicker of movement in EHLEDL. How do you make sure that you don't further and uh, I mean worsen the injury? Yeah, what I what I tend to advise with these fractures, um, we used to we used to say put some traction on and then send them, but now we've changed our practice. So what we do now is we say um, either put a little pillow underneath their knee just to make them comfortable, just to try and release. Uh, some of that tension, which may be there on the nerve roots, um, or uh, we say send them as soon as possible as they are. Just make sure they're analgesed and send them to us. And then what I would do is I would try and get on and try and operate on this as soon as possible. And I agree. I think um, it's difficult to determine whether it's the sciatic nerve or whether it's the uh, uh, lumbosacral plexus. But I think when you go in to, to fix this fracture, you should be able to um, decompress both. So final question, Dr. Sain, during the surgery, what precautions should I take to avoid further injury to the nerves? There are two things, because you are going from the anterior side, you will be taking an effort to reduce that posterior column upwards. The only thing we have to see whether the nerve is not getting entrapped with the fragment itself also. That's a very important thing. So we must be clear about our reduction technique and especially taking care that we see what is being reduced at that level. So I, I think that level of a perception is very important at this stage so that we do not increase the chance. If the nerve, the, the part of the nerve is entrapped because I remember in one of the cases which I had that if the sharp fragment was actually bisecting the nerve as such. So mm. that situation should not be there. So we have to be very careful at the time of a reduction along with the traction so that the secondary effect for the position of the fragment is also available there. So we have to combine traction with manipulation with care over that place, which probably can help. Yes. And final question to Dr. Pradeep Nimade, since you are doing so well with the STOPA approach, can you tell me if you can very well visualize the sciatic nerve in this area and make sure with your stopa approach that the sciatic nerve is not entrapped in this. And what would you do if it is entrapped in this? Uh, I'm not very sure that whether we can uh, see the sciatic nerve predictably. Yes, if it is there inside it, we may be able to see. But if it is very posterior, it, means it cannot be predicted. If you yes. see it, you can see it. But you can, if you don't see it, you cannot go, go on looking for it uh, in stopa. Yeah, so would you be comfortable putting a clamp and reducing this by stopa method uh, if you have not seen the entire length of the fracture? Uh, no, I, 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 this case for me, I would be ready for a dual approach. And if in case I'm not able to very uh, in cleanly the uh, the issue, the ischial uh, fragment, ischial fragment, to put mm. it back, if the path is not safe, I think I will better uh, go by the posterior approach to uh, put it back. Side. Yes. One so of that's the, how, yes, sir. One of the other points in this kind of fracture is your superior gluteal uh, vascular bundle often uh, ruptures. Ruptures. Then it clots by the time the patient comes to you. Yeah. Stops bleeding. These patients can be unstable in the beginning, and when you start your manipulations, it starts bleeding again. Yes. So you have to be really aware of that, and sometimes it may help to have um, a prophylactic um, angiography. Angiography. Right? So that if you can see a flare where the artery or the vein has ruptured, you mm -hmm. could actually embolize it before you begin. Or at least you know that you have to be careful in that area. Yeah, or, or have a friend, uh, a vascular friend. Yeah, vascular. yeah. so moving ahead with this case, uh, 
I started with the lateral window filio angular approach because the SI joint fragment uh, needed to be fixed. So uh, provisional reduction and fixation of that SI joint fragment. And then uh, the reduction and fixation of the iliac crest portion. So the anterior column is proximally well fixed now. Then I moved ahead and did the uh, anterior column distal portion fixation with the help of this uh, reconstruction plate. So this is now the patient with all anterior portion fixed, but as you can all see, the posterior portion is not aligned, not fixed. So it was not reducible by traction and I did not try to manipulate in that area because I was really concerned about uh, the point that Dr. Nikhil had mentioned. I have, I can say burnt my fingers once with that. So I'm extra careful nowadays. I have a low threshold for dual approach. So this is the posterior column, which was not reduced. I was worried about the sciatic nerve. So I went posteriorly and did this fixation by KL approach. But if you all can make out, there is this small loose lying fragment over here, over here. And I will tell you what it is. So this was the view. This is the fracture site, the sciatic nerve, the superior gluteal vessels, and it was in the fracture. And how much ever I try to get this manipulate, I mean, try to get this nerve out, this long spike would not allow me. There was so much of tension on the nerve. So I osteotomized that spike and then did the reduction. And that osteotomized spike you all can see over here as a loose fragment. So this was the final image uh, after the two fixations. Uh, this is the three month image of that patient with uh, EHL and EDL improving. Now it is grade three plus power and uh, the fracture is already healed. Now, before moving to the next, I think we'll take it in the cases discussion section because that is also a very complex case, uh, combined case. I will hand over now to Dr. Mehul, who will talk to us about the special situations. And then if we have time, we'll come back to cases. Thank you very much. Can I, can I, can I just ask you one question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you have look at this fixation here. You have crossed the SI joint yes. uh, it, uh, with three screws here. Two screws, yes, two screws. The third screw is on the lateral side of the joint line and the two screws so, are medially. So I want others to tell us about it, like, you know, whether this, this can be a problem. I mean, yes, it was so discussed uh, in our group and everybody was of the opinion that it is far too medially that I have gone. Fortunately, I had the lumbosacral trunk under vision and because of that SI joint fragment, which has pulled up a lot of periosteal erasement was already done. So okay. it was not difficult for me to go to that extent. It is right. periosteal displayed, but still, yes, that is a very, very important point of concern. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Usually, usually you can only get one screw yes. medial to the SI joint. Um, yeah. And then the other view, the view to take is the, is the outlet for you. And that will show you whether your screw is going um, lateral to the foramen or not. And I think I agree. I think uh, on on the uh, most view on the right, it looks pretty good. Your, your, uh, uh, Mr. Acharya, can I ask you uh, any any particular guide uh, when you when you drill that hole on the sacral side? Any any anything that helps you to uh, reference the direction of the drill? Anything that you would like to say? Yeah, absolutely. So what I tend to do is I tend to get a very uh, thin K wire and put it right. into the joint. I put it into the joint and that gives me an idea of the direction of the joint. Um, and then I use vision. So I use the, the outlet view um, and make sure that I'm, I'm not traversing the foramen. So I keep my drill bit parallel to that uh, K wire that I put in. And, and normally how long is that screw and what is the direction when you're drilling from the top? Yeah, very good. So the screw length is usually, if you get if you get a good corridor, it's about 40 uh, to 50 mils. Um, I try and go through the other cortex. So I try and get a bicortical screw if I can. If they're elderly, I'll try and put a cancellous screw sometimes just to give me a bit more purchase. But you're right, you're, you're, the, the direction, you're heading down towards, so I wish I had a pelvis, I would have showed you, but essentially the patient's supine and you're heading towards the feet um, and you're keeping slightly lateral so you don't go medial and hit the foramen. Another, another, another useful um, thing is obviously uh, when you drill, 
uh, low speed drilling like mes mentioned but using the oscillating drill yes. so you can actually okay. feel the bone with every oscillation and it's it's really a careful cautious uh, low speed drilling and sometimes when i'm not sure how much i've drilled i take it out i use a k wire uh, back side front with the blunt end blunt and you can actually palpate the hole yes like the spine people do for the pedicle yeah. you can almost uh, sound it you can say yes right. fine so and i think we can conclude the session here and move to dr mehul acharya and then we'll come back to the last case if we have time can you unshare your screen ah perfect okay so thank you very much uh, for inviting me back it's been a pleasure to listen to these um um discussions uh, on a regular basis and be part of them so thank you thank you so much for um um having me back can you all hear me okay yeah perfect so i've been asked to speak about uh, some of the special situations uh, in both column fractures and i think for any acetabular fracture if you're thinking about fixing it it's a special situation because it needs care it needs attention and you need to get it right okay if you if you ask me what what do you understand by a special situation so i thought about it a while and i thought let me let me try and put a special situation down in some words so what i put down is a special situation is an atypical event that has the potential to alter the standard practice with the possibility of impacting on the outcome or influencing the outcome and that's what i think and so that's a lot of things in there so it's something that might not be um normal so it's atypical it may alter your approach your thinking your fixation and if you don't think about it it may affect your overall outcome and i think what you can do is you can you can look at these fractures and you can say well actually this is a special circumstance because of the patient it's a special circumstance because of the fracture pattern itself or it's a, a special situation because of the surgeon experience so this surgeon particular surgeon has uh, you know 20 years of experience there may be other surgeons who may only have one or two years of experience okay and it's important to bear that in mind as well so for me when you uh, when you look at a, a, a both column fracture what makes it difficult um and what makes it more challenging and this is this is how i like to think about it it may not include everything but this is when when i think about difficulties this is what i think about so i think about uh, posterior extension and comminution and front of us has already mentioned that the more posterior the fracture is the more extensive your approach may have to be and you may well need to visualize all that uh, completely if it involves a sacroiliac joint again it's a more extensive approach you may need to think about a dual approach okay if you've got a posterior wall involvement so we've seen in quite a few of the cases we've seen uh, an associated posterior wall fracture now nikhil has already mentioned to us that when you have a both column fracture the soft tissue envelope or the sleeve is 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 intact the capsule is intact and usually when you pull on that leg when you apply some traction all the fracture fragments tend to come into position around that joint but sometimes when you've got some wall fractures that isn't always the case they they may be tilted they may be angulated and in the young patient you want to try and reduce this and so having a posterior wall involvement just makes you think about what type of wall fracture it is whether it can be managed all through one approach or whether you've got to think about a second approach or an extensile approach as dr das will talk to us about later um again the other thing that we're seeing more and more of now certainly in the more elderly group as well is dome impaction or dome involvement so there's a separate fragment of the weight bearing dome which has been pushed superiorly which has been pushed medially which has been impacted and again 
if you're repositioning all the cortical bits, it's really, really important to put back that dome bit as well. And we had this in a couple of the other sessions um, before, how to reduce dome impaction, et cetera. But when you see this with an ABC, it makes it more challenging and you just need to think about it. And then moving on to combination of injuries. So again, when I, uh, when I spoke about uh, the transverse fractures and the combination of um, pelvic ring injuries with transverse fractures, I mentioned that the ABC group is another group of fractures which commonly is associated with pelvic ring injury. So it's important to bear that in mind. And then last but not least, we're seeing a lot of elderly um, fractures, elderly pelvic fractures, elderly acetabular fractures. And these can be very, very challenging because their bone quality isn't great. You've got to be um, certain that you've got good purchase in the bone, good fixation in the bone, and you may just change your approach and you may change your um, treatment modality for this group of patients as well but we're not gonna talk about that today. So what I'm gonna do is talk a little bit about some of the patient-related complexities and some of the fracture-related complexities and how that may influence our approaches. And what I'm gonna do is talk through a few cases and try and highlight some of these points um, that, that were mentioned. So the first case is a 67-year-old consultant anesthetist um, who had a previous left hip hemiarthroplasty in Thailand six years ago, functioning very well indeed. He cycles almost uh, 15 to 20 miles a day. Um, he's had a previous uh, abdominal hernia mesh repair and has fallen from a bicycle. So that's his x-ray there. So looking at it, you know, the, we all appreciate that it's an associated both column acetabular fracture and his bone quality looks pretty good. Um, very little comminution that you can see on that, on that initial view. We see some Jude views. And again, you see um, quite marked um, displacement uh, of uh, the acetabular fracture. You see that um, high anterior column fracture line up here uh, and, and, and under there. And then you see the lower anterior column fracture line. And this is classic of the uh, both column acetabular fracture. You see the posterior column fracture line here. You see the mesh hernia as well. So what makes this difficult? Well, actually looking at the fracture, the fracture looks like a typical ABC, high ABC that we've talked about. And as long as we start at the back, we should be able to, um, to, to fix that sequentially. But what makes it difficult is his mesh. So he's had abdominal mesh, quite extensive. And you see all these uh, little clips where the mesh has been clipped in, et cetera, and he's got a hemiarthroplasty. And the problem is, I don't know what that hemiarthroplasty is. The hemiarthroplasty is an uncemented stem, which is well bonded, okay? So you can argue, you could say, well, if you had pain in that hip, you could think about revising that hip. But actually for me, it, the decision-making was made easier because actually that hip was a well-functioning hip and he didn't have any pain in the hip or the thigh. So I was going to preserve that hemiarthroplasty. So this is what I did. I did a, um, a lateral window um, and I did an AIP. And what I tried to do is stay away from all of this mesh here. So I did a, I did a fan and steel incision here. Uh, I did a midline split through the rectus and I came in under that mesh, okay, to get onto the superior pubic ramus. And up here on the iliac crest, I, I used a lateral window and stayed again away from that mesh. If you've tried developing a, a, a middle window, the second window, when someone has had a hernia mesh, it is a nightmare. Okay, everything is stuck down. So try not to do it. So that's what I did for him. Uh, this was um, a few years ago now. And those are his post-ops. So you can see I've started, um, just as Pranava said, with the principles, starting at the periphery and working centrally. Um, and he did very well. Just some CT scans, post-op, to show his reduction. So some axial scans coming in there. And you see that I was pretty happy with his dome reduction. You can see all those little clips of his um, mesh. And again, some coronal scans. Showing reasonable reduction. Okay, 
Second case where, again, there's a patient-related complexity to this. So this is a 55-year-old male. He was a pedestrian hit by a Porsche going over 100 miles an hour. Um, he had an injury to his left hemipelvis. However, on his initial scan, it was picked up that he had an intimal tear of his right common iliac, and he, and he, had, and he also had a wound over the left lateral thigh. So that's his initial um, uh, x-ray there, his AP pelvic x-ray, and you can appreciate um, that there's marked displacement of that left hip and acetabulum. It has been imploded centrally. There's been a large part of that articular surface which has been imploded uh, medially as well. Those are his Jude oblique views. And again, you see the degree of deformity. That's his lateral wound. So the one on the uh, top left shows the wound after the first debridement on the day he came in. And then the second wound down below shows um, the plastic surgeons uh, sequentially doing a, a, an extension of the wound, debriding it further, okay? Some CT scans of his injury, just so that you can appreciate his injury. I'm just going to stop it there and just play it back a little bit. So there you see some comminution. You see that fracture in the ileum. You see the displacement. You see that there's a separate posterior wall bit as well, which is small. And you see the displacement there. I'll just run through the coronals as well. So what makes things difficult for this guy? Well, he's had an intimal tear on the right side. And what we do is um, we do some Doppler ultrasound scans. If the patients are gonna wait more than, more than three days for an operation, then we do a Doppler ultrasound scan of their veins. So he's got a right intimal tear of the common femoral. He's got a degloving type injury to the left lateral thigh. He's also got a left iliac vein thrombosis, which has been picked up on Doppler screening, which is, which is complete. Um, and he's got a, an associated both column acetabular fracture with a small posterior wall. So this complicates things because usually when you've got a displaced posterior wall fracture, you may well be thinking about an extensile approach or you may be thinking about two approaches, et cetera. If you're thinking about this particular type, um, this particular fracture type, he's got a left iliac vein thrombosis so again you want to try and stay away from that middle window you want to try and um, reduce the manipulation of the femoral vessels as much as possible so this is what we do here so he has an ivc filter put in um, preoperatively and this is what i do so again um, i do uh, an aip uh, and a lateral window um, I reduce the fracture, reduce that um, um, medially uh, displaced portion, and it was pretty easy. It was a big chunk, and once you pulled on it and you got a, uh, a ball spike and, and tapped it down, it reduced very nicely. I've held it with a single screw, and then I've put in uh, um, a, a neutralization plate with further screws. You can see I've opted not to do a second approach and not to think about securing that small posterior wall fragment because of the problem with the moral level lesion. And that's him at two years. So again, just running through some of his scans. His axial scans showing concentric reduction, small posterior wall, which I didn't chase. and his coronals there as well. And then with regards to the um, IVC filter, we usually try and remove that um, um, around the two month mark and he had his successfully removed. So that just shows a, a little video of the, uh, the umbrella being closed and his IVC filter being removed. Okay, so we're gonna move on to, to three or four cases just 
looking at fracture related complexity. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the patient. We're going to talk about the fracture itself. So this was a 46 year old female, fit and well. She fell off a bicycle, isolated injury to her right acetabulum. This I've um, ju just treated her this week actually. So uh, she came in um, right on time. Um, this is her initial imaging. So uh, a plain radiograph, an AP radiograph, and you see the, uh, um, the right acetabular fracture. You see that there is dome involvement um, and impaction of this fragment um, superiorly. You see that there's this large fragment here, okay? Just have a look at her CT scan. So this is just a coronal scan. Showing the fracture, showing that posterior wall element of the fracture and the dome bit. I'm just gonna bring that back so you can see there's the wall element of the fracture. There's that piece that we talked about, the dome, which has been impacted in. And then uh, the, the 3D CT, again, just to bring that round a little bit slower. See the posterior wall, and this is, this is classic of a posterior wall fracture in an ABC. So usually if you get a fracture like this, which is a large sort of diamond shaped fracture, um, then you know that you may well be able to, to fix this or gain some stability of this fracture through the anterior approach. If you've got a more comminuted, displaced posterior wall fracture, you may not be able to access it through the anterior approach. So that's important to, to, to look at and beware of. And then if we just look at a couple of the cuts from that 3D CT, the real importance for me is to visualize these 3D CTs and, and, and look at how I can get to that dome bit, whether I need to get through it through the AIP or whether I need to come in from the top. And if you look at this cut here uh, on the left, you can see that this is the quadrilateral surface is part of the anterior column and the brim. And you can see there's that dome piece. There's the, the dome piece that we wanna try and bring down. And just another view here, here's the uh, quadrilateral plate element. Here's the uh, pelvic brim. There's that piece in there, okay. So what, you'd, what my strategy would be, would be to go in there, try and open up that quadrilateral plate bit, try and lift up that brim and try and bring that dome piece down. So this is her, so that's exa exactly what I did. Um, uh, the picture on the left shows the uh, ball spike pushing that dome piece down, okay? And then you can see I'm, um, I'm stabilizing uh, the anterior column, um, just as Pranav has uh, explained to us, um, stabilizing it with a screw initially, and then I've fired a, um, uh, an LC2 type screw. And then I'm reducing the rest of the anterior column uh, and then bringing the posterior column up to it. And you can see the sequence of, um, of, of plates and screws. Um, and that's her there. So uh, this is the case I, she came in over the weekend. I did it on Tuesday. Um, these x-rays and the CTs are from yesterday. So just looking through the CT, See, a dome looks pretty good. I'm just gonna bring that back so we can see the dome again. There's, there's a dome, that looks pretty good. Managed to get that impacted piece down into a good position. And then if we just look through her coronals as well. Again, that just shows I've managed to get that dome piece down. It looks okay. Okay, next case. So 39 year old male, a uh, motorcyclist versus car. He was query rolled over by his car. He had a pulseless right leg, um, injury to his right hemipelvis. So that's him there. And you, as, as you can see on those AP views, he's already got clips in. So he's already had a laparotomy. The vascular surgeons uh, did a laparotomy, um, explored 
the uh, uh, common iliac and then the um, um, external iliac. They found a large clot in the external iliac um, and evacuated that. So um, we see uh, uh, quite a displaced acetabular fracture. We see that potentially his right sacroiliac joint is open. We see that um, uh, his pubic symphysis doesn't look right um, and there is an injury there. So again, this is um, slightly more complex. It's got an acetabular fracture, but it's also got a pelvic ring injury. Just to appreciate his acetabular fracture a, a, a bit further. So this just shows some uh, axial cuts This just shows some uh, coronal cuts. See the extent of the injury. So operative plan for him, um, start at the back, again, work forward, stabilize the sacroiliac joint, stabilize the acetabulum uh, and stabilize the anterior ring. So again, sequence of images starting at the back, uh, right iliosacral screw, and then starting at the back, with the crest and the, and the higher part of the anterior column and working my way forward. And in this particular case, what I've done is I've um, used a plate all the way to stabilize the anterior uh, column, the pelvic brim, which then runs across to the uh, left uh, uh, superior pubic ramus um, and bridges the uh, symphysis there. And that's him there. His CTs. Again, dome's looking good. Pelvic ring looks good. Front looks good. Again, hip looks good. Hip. Case five. So this is a 49 year old male um, chopping down a branch, fell from a tree, um, injury to right hemipelvis. This is the guy who came in in March. So there you go. Uh, so again, you know, um, quite a comminuted multifragmentary fracture of the right acetabulum. You can see the fracture line going up into the uh, iliac crest. You can see um, uh, the comminution posteriorly as well. If we look at, if we look at his um, CT scan, I'm just going to bring that back because it's very different to the posterior wall that we saw with um, the last case or the last but one case. And in that uh, posterior wall fracture, it was a large single diamond shaped piece. Look in this one, this one's a multi-fragmentary posterior wall fracture, okay. Going into the column there, multi-fragmentary column as well. So it just makes you aware of the extent of the injury. And the fact that you may not be able to do this all through one approach. And so with him, I'd plan to do two approaches. Um, and you know, there are various ways of doing it. I tend to do the anterior approach first, followed by uh, um, a Cocker Langenbeck approach. Again, same principles as we've talked about. So starting in the periphery, securing that crest, securing the high anterior column. Um, it's important if you're thinking about doing two approaches um, sequentially, not simultaneously. We've talked about screw placement and length of screw. So you can see that there aren't any screws placed into the posterior column initially, and the screws are pretty short. Um, you can see my uh, uh, ball spike pusher with a disc uh, helping to get some reduction in, in multiple planes. And we've talked about this clamp here um, the angled uh, uh, pointy reduction clamp, which is very, very helpful. And then, so once I've done my anterior column fixation, I turn the patient and, and, and go around the back and uh, plate the posterior column also. And that's in there. So quite long surgery, uh, uh, about five and a half hours of operating, but pretty good reduction there. And again, looking through his CTs,
just get to the dome. So again, happy, happy with his dome there, concentric hip. And you can see there the multiple fragments in that posterior wall. We've managed to cure that. Just some coronals again, good reduction. Case six, so this is the last case before I finish. Um, uh, polytraumatized patient with hemodynamic instability. So a road traffic uh, collision, uh, driver, um, head-on collision. Um, bilateral pelvic ring injury with a displaced acetabular fracture, um, ipsilateral closed femoral fracture, ipsilateral lateral femoral condyle fracture, same leg, multiple other injuries, some open. This is him there. So he's got a binder on. You can appreciate that he's got an anterior pelvic ring injury here. His left sacroiliac joint looks open. You can't quite see the sacral fracture. We'll see that on a CT. You see his right acetabular fracture. He's got a femoral fracture below the picture here, which is closed. Just appreciate his axial cuts. So you see the sacral fracture on the right. His SI joint was open on the left and you see the comminution um, at his right acetabular fracture. You see the anterior pelvic ring injury also. So quite a high energy injury, multiple injuries. This guy was pretty sick when he came in. You can see the extent of the injury. So what do we do with him? Well, certainly life before um, limb. So uh, his pelvis and his femur are stabilized initially. Um, his open fractures are, are managed. And so this is what I did for him. I stabilized the back of his pelvis, iliosacral screws um, on both sides and an anterior external fixator. And this just shows his uh, interval CT after his initial um, damage control surgery and uh, resuscitation. And unfortunately with him, he died. I was planning to bring him back um, for his acetabular fracture fixation, but he unfortunately died eight days later due to sepsis. So in summary, you know, I've tried to try to highlight um, a few special circumstances with these fractures. Um, as, as I mentioned initially, all acetabular fractures um, need, if they're going to be operated on, they have to be made perfect. Okay. With the ABC, they usually follow a, a fracture pattern and a reduction sequence. But it's really, really important to think outside the box because there are some things that will make this fracture particularly more difficult and you just need to think about it and those can be patient factors they can be fracture pattern factors or surgeon experience and I'll just bring that up again once more so for me what makes an ABC difficult is posterior extension and comminution sacroiliac joint involvement posterior wall involvement if there's any impaction of the dome and how you're going to bring that down and then these combination of injuries, which may be very high injury and which do have a, a worse outcome than the rest. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mehul. They, you presented a set of most, most mesmerizing cases. I think we are all very impressed. Similarly, what uh, Dr. Sain has done and you have showed us very nice cases. Now, since we don't have uh, any significant questions as of now, we move forward with Dr. Das, who is going to the unique FA and uh, the way he treats his uh, ABC fractures. So over to you, Dr. Das. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we uh, can. Uh, uh, okay, before I start, uh, some, some incredible cases uh, by Mr. Acharya and uh, really, uh, significantly serious injuries and his cases which he thought to be atypical and he described point by except in the last point which is the combined pelvis acetabular injury other things are the cases which I would normally do to 
extended iliofemoral approach. So I thank you for uh, in initiating that topic over there. Next, Pranab, I just want to ask you, uh, Vishal Acharya, I want to ask you the patient who had the left side external iliac vein thrombosis and you went in the AIP. Did you have any particular worry about, uh, you know, uh, I have injured this uh, vein once, ex this external iliac vein. Uh, it was ruptured and when I went in, uh, it was 18 days old. So the whole thing had sort of, you know, thrombosed and uh, there was a big clot. I disclosed the whole thing and I had a terrible time. Dr. Sen knows about that case. We spent uh, 27 hours in serving the patient. We had multiple team coming in and doing it. So I want to know when you have a thrombosis, despite putting the inferior vena uh, 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 this umbrella, why, in the first place, why he had a thrombosis? Could you please tell us? Mr. Yeah, Ajay. from 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 my understanding, I think if you looked at his fracture configuration, you saw that medially displaced fragment. Yes. Um, and that must have been pushing on the vessels, um, both the, the the artery and the vein. And it's it's it, it's really interesting. So this guy came in on say he came in today, day one. So we scanned him two days later, and he had a complete occlusion of his femoral vein, complete. Um, and so we're, we've also seen, because we, we Doppler ultrasound scan probably about 75, 80% of our patients that come in, pre-op and post-op. And what we've found is, is some patients, even day one post-injury, may well have a significant vein thrombosis. So I think partly is it's the injury and the injury mechanism and all of that, but I think it must be their physiological response, their genetics, um, and all of those factors that come into it. So I think with him, he had quite a significant injury with that big medial fragment pressing on the vein, but I think he must have had some other hypercoagulable state as well. Right, and, and so many of us are doing this AIP Pradeep, uh, Pranab, Dr. Stain, Vivek Rika, I just want to know how many of them have come across any injury or thrombosis to the external iliac vein. Please, yeah, please, please so tell me. I've, I've very, very similar to you. I have had one case in a delayed fracture, um, 20, 23 days old, where I was doing an AIP and just as, and in an elderly patient. So she was 65, 70. And, and in her, you're absolutely right. Going in at that stage, everything is stuck down. And what happens, even though you're very, very careful clearing that brim because everything's so friable because of her physiology because of the age and because of the the fact that it's all delayed trying to lift things off is is even if you try and do it carefully you can injure the vein and and i've had i've had one vein injury because of that absolutely i tell you my first aip 2008 and uh, I, when i opened up i found a large cricket ball size clot so I thought there was a tumor. It was very hard. And it was an 18 days old fracture in a doctor's brother with a, a medial uh, quadrilateral plate coming straight to the center. So I was fiddling with it with a periostem elevator when I lifted it. Then a big ball of Cadbury chocolate-like clot, it came out and patient decompensated. And where, wherever I was catching, the vessel was friable. Yeah. So I, I literally, uh, you know, uh, I, I had no help, so I had to get a vascular surgeon, packed it, and I think I discussed this with Dr. Sen, and he said David Helpett had such an injury, and his plastic surgeon arrived two hours later because you're stuck in the traffic. So I, it was a big relief to me, you know, that I got a plastic surgeon in eight hours' time. Anyway, next day, we put a 8 mm uh, uh, conduit to grease that uh, defect, and the patient survived. The patient survived, and uh, he's okay. I mean, uh, it was... A, very nightmare situation. The reason I am asking you because we see so many cases, we don't think about it. Suppose you have a thrombosis or you have a rupture, preoperatively, if you do not know, you can get into a problem and you know it's, it's, it will be a big mess. Uh, you put an umbrella and you know you had things to control, but we don't normally do that kind of assessment. So the message is, we should always think about this. Think of the worst before you start, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and also one other learning point for me, you know, I've had to abandon AIP a few times 
Um, and these are some of the fractures which are delayed. And, and there, are, there are some anatomical variances as well. So if you look at people's blood vessels, they're different. And sometimes um, you've got some very big blood vessels coming in through the AIP. So they've got some anomalous um, vasculature. And with those, I've had to uh, abandon AIP twice and go and do an ileoinguinal. So do the second window of the ileoinguinal and come from the top. Because if I was going to come in from the bottom, I was going to damage the vessels. Absolutely right. 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 And uh, I want to ask, Pranav, no, 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 I'll, I'll ask you this question. Uh, do we have a fixed team assisting you in the surgery? You do such complex cases. Do you have a team which is fixed and they assist you in the, the same team comes in every time? You have such complex cases. Uh, no. Three, three people, I mean, one is the surgical assistants, yeah, my orthopedic uh, colleagues who are in my team and my uh, OT staff. They are the same people, they always come. Then second thing is uh, our anesthetist. Even our anesthetist is the same person for all my complex cases because I rely totally on him to monitor the patient on the whole. And third thing is the backup of general surgeon and vascular surgeon. That I will always have in kind of cases where I presume something may be wrong. But I'll just add to what uh, all of you are discussing. Uh, I was actually going to take it in the question answer session, but since we started this, uh, I had the misfortune of going in and operating upon a patient with uh, acetabulum fracture. And that patient was uh, obese, having a deep pain thrombosis, and we went in probably on the 10th day. The vascular surgeon scrubbed with me to start with. And let me tell you, it was hell of a job to even mobilize the vessel. We could not mobilize the vessel. There was no way we could create a plane from the AIP side because it was all walled off. It was all such thick fibrous tissue. You are always worried to even put a cautery in that area let alone put a periosteum elevator. So the AIP approach was done and abandoned. The ilioinguinal approach, we could reach only up to the level where we could just little bit displace the vessels medially and we could just put a spring plate and the anterior column plate. I could not even put a brim plate because I could not get a plane beneath the vessels where I could slide my plate. So that <laughs> gave me that, uh, I mean, it always, when you burn your fingers, you learn something. So I always have it, made it a point now that if there is a patient with a deep pain thrombosis and it is in the second or third week, I am not going to go from the front. I will deal with consequences, but I will never be able to do a good job. I don't know what other people have experienced, but this is my experience. Right. You you forget about your radiographer. You must have a constant radiographer, right? Yes. You, you, you must have a constant radiographer. You, you, yes. you, in your team. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, so no. let, let me finish. Let me, let me finish my talk if I can yes. finish because uh, my name yes. is extremely unstable. I hope yes. I'll be able to finish it. And uh, let us uh, start uh, with the PowerPoint. Uh, sorry about it. We'll go to the. Okay. Um, so this is this I have been uh, speaking. Uh, yesterday also we had this in the AO webinar, but nothing great about it. After seeing the type of cases you people are doing through other approaches, I think we should abandon this. Pradeep, no more uh, workshop on this. Okay? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, application of ABC, uh, application of extended aluminum approach in uh, ABC fractures. So, you know, whether it is a uh, any, any displaced acetabular fracture, we need to uh, do a perfect anatomical reduction to get the hip congruity and get the hip stable by stable fixation. And um, here we are going to talk about the both column fractures. This is a case from 2004. Uh, young lady, 13 years old, uh, combined uh, speed uh, RTA is 180 kilometers. Uh, she was traveling in a small Jane car and she was hit by a lorry. This is, this is how she came. In fact, the uh, head was centrally dislocated when they came, this is how it was maintained. Uh, so this is, uh, I would say Dr. Sen has shown some, we are carpenters. So he has done filigree job. He has done very fine jobs. I really appreciate the way he has fixed uh, some of the complex fractures. This is a fracture which uh, I would say, Pradeep is your type two, uh, or uh, inferior or uh, lower uh, ABC fracture with significant combination of the roof. This is only 13 years old and she is still growing. 
you can see the other side hip epiphysis is still open and i i would have done extended iliofemoral approach in this case but i went in and did uh, through dual approach and uh, this is a low abc this is the situation so this is the ct scan similar case uh, this is a recent one 18 years old lady fell from height of 30 feet she has a similar injury and this one i went in and did through the extended iliofemoral approach so this is the first lady this is five years uh, follow up she is actually she is okay she is down in bangalore she is developing arthritis arthritic changes and the other lady uh, this is a 10 years follow up this is the other lady who had this uh, 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 low abc fracture and uh, i did to extend the iliofemoral approach and this is what we got so basically this they are all fresh fractures relatively fresh fractures they have been done through different approaches the first one we did to combined approach second one through extensile extensile approach if you ask me personally i do through extensile approach even in the young people and uh, who come early because you you see everything before you and you reduce these fractures using the head of the femur as a template you can graft it to stabilize and then fix it the way you want and i would not uh, struggle i that's why i asked god if you have a good radiographer that's a boon uh, radiology uh, radiology technician so if you don't have that i mean you have everything before you and you comfortably fix this fracture to extend the iliofemoral approach and both have similar outcome but the lady first lady she is now 16 years since surgery she is trying to she is showing signs of arthritis because i think i would have done the job better if I, had i gone through the extended iliofemoral approach in that lady i just did not do it because she was too small a girl and uh, she was 13 and see her gt was still growing and i didn't like to do anything with that so the first step is an approach for an adequate uh, exposure is highly essential for doing a perfect reduction so the choice of approach depends on the types of fracture age of the patient associated injuries local soft tissue condition and preference of the surgeon and one thing i did not write is a time since injury i think that's again another thing which decides your approach and of course instrumentation with changing uh, i just want to tell you that uh, uh, i read the first extended iliofemoral approach from 1986 hip society book and litonel himself has written only three pages next one i read from david helfert's book in 1999 where he has written seven pages and today i read the book from the you know the ao book where there are only one and a half pages so it shows how the the whole world has changed and and the description is only for the name sake there is nothing much to say so this is basically going out of book unfortunately in my language because i feel it's a great approach and it, we should not just leave it like that so basically when we reach when you reduce the acetabular fracture it's like any other intraarticular fracture we when we do a distal femur fracture or a distal uh, humerus fracture you open it see it and fix it and then you fix the articular component with the metaphyseal or diaphyseal component here it is different you do an indirect reduction you fix it from the periphery and it goes to the center that means you have a lot of a lot of care to make absolute anatomical reduction otherwise a small deflection in the periphery can be a major deflection in the articular component so when you reduce these fractures from periphery remotely the deeply seated acetabulum is supposed to get back to its pre injury state that is what we try to do it so the reduction has to be in all the dimensions all the three dimensions it has to be accurate i was just saying you about distal humerus fracture do it back the intercondylar into supracondylar and then fix with the diaphysis this is how we treat same thing when you do a distal femur fracture you make it make the intercondylar fracture into supracondylar and then fix with the shaft we do not do the same thing for the acetabular fractures we go from the periphery and go to the center so which means your approach has a lot of bearing on how you get what kind of reduction you get that is why i'll show you so the reduction is you, you uh, aim to give an anatomical reduction by a centripetal direction from periphery to the center 
and we don't see the articular reduction ourselves when you do that you may be getting some uh, uh, guidance from the cm or people who are oam but we really and you doctor mr acharya had shown post op ct scans i think that's the post mortem also i mean you feel satisfied that you see these cases well reduced but if you don't have it well reduced you have nothing to do at that point of time but that is why our exposure should be such that we should be able to get 100% anatomical reduction despite the difficulty of the fracture we know that 1964 letonel described these two approaches and 10 years later he came out with the extended ilofemoral approach because he found certain fractures are very difficult to reduce with either kl or ilofemoral approach and in combination he had more operating time more bleeding morbidity complications and lot of imagination to do because you swap between the front and the back so he 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 thought lot of these fractures had suboptimal reduction so which are the difficult fractures abc fractures that you need to consider for this approach widely separated abc fracture dr vishal acharya has shown excuse me extended posterior fractures with abc fracture abc fractures extend to sacroiliac joint dr saha has shown and lately presenting fractures and i will make an addition what c3 type abc type 2 abc fractures which are the lower abc fracture when they are comminuted i find them very conveniently reduced and fixed by extended ilofemoral approach <coughs> excuse me this is the widely displaced abc fracture this is again another one and this is again with a large uh, suprastabular uh, uh, impaction this is the suprastabular you can't get it reduced even if you use the tocco langenbeck approach with the fit trochanter structure you can't get this out so 1974 litonel said extensile single exposure direct reduction reduction under vision intra articular reduction under vision and he proved that the quality of reduction was superior i am not this is not abc fracture in a fracture like this you can have an intra articular you can peep into the joint and see whether the articular cartilage is, uh, is uh, well reduced this is the case which seven years post up this is just uh, one of those slides i brought up for this extension uh, into the uh, uh, for discussing with the extended ilofemoral approach though this is not an abc fracture so eifa was designed for certain complex associated fractures and the fractures presenting late the exposure you get with this approach you all know is complete exposure of the lateral aspect of the innominate bone the retroastabular area right up to the ischial fibrosis and if you do a surgical dislocation you have a look into the joint and if you have intraarticular mal union you can take out those bony bridges and do a reduction and if you want to go in anteriorly like dr sense asi osteotomy you do that and you can get into the inside of the pelvis right up to the iliopectinal eminence you can do all kinds of reductions using this approach so basically steps is an internervous approach between the femoral nerve medially and the supraglutear and intragluteal nerve laterally it exposes the entire innominate lateral innominate bone by posterior reflection of a single flap skin fascia and hip abductus and short external rotators and it can be extended anteriorly and if you do a pericapsular uh, arthrotomy you can see inside the joint the position is lateral and like kl approach you will keep the knee flexed hip extended to relax the sciatic nerve your incision starts at the psis and goes along the iliac crest of the psis and then turns laterally parallel to the femur on the anterolateral aspect of the thigh towards the lateral edge of the patella this is very important you should not get into the femoral nerve peridine this is the position you see this uh, uh, this uh, padding over the common peroneal nerve area this is the wrist and padding over the ulnar nerve i recently i did a case where patient woke up from sleep patient had pre op sciatic nerve uh, neuralgia woke up from sleep with complete global paralysis of the foot left other side and on this side she has recovered so the reason is the people who position this patient they put the pad around the knee joint and put a bandage or crepe bandage around that when you bend the crepe bandage it produces a tunica like effect 
and the patient woke up with a tunica paralysis sort of thing she took long time to recover so basically everything positioning and everything should be done by you i often always i give this central line in delayed cases sometimes i put intra arterial line to monitor the intra arterial blood pressure this is the padding for the uh, ulnar nerve the approach is all of you know that this is a inverted j shaped approach this is what you do in the uh, iliac crest area and then go around the front of the thigh and uh, i think uh, our uh, mr acharya is here i would just tell him ask him yeah, i have seen uh, when you are there as a faculty in the little nail course uh, there was a demonstration of half an hour on extended iliofemoral approach by dr joel bata on a predissected body the incision was small the incision was up to here the uh, gluteal uh, the gluteus maximus insertion was the distal point i think most of the acetabulum fractures when you do through a smaller incision and put the liver into greater sciatic notch and pull them backwards for retraction of the big flap you produce muscle maceration and necrosis i think that is one of the cause for uh, ho uh, following this surgery so i prefer to put a little longer incision and keep the flap relaxed without putting any pressure on the muscle mass so you erase the muscles from the front to the back from and uh, erase all muscles kfl gluteus medius gluteus minimus then like cockelangenbeck approach release the short rotators and gluteus maximus do the osteotomy of the gt do litonet classically described doing tenotomy of the gluteus minimus and minimus and gluteus medius but doing a gt i find it more convenient then of course you reduce the fracture and do fixation and close they have advised intraosseous sutures i found that was very cumbersome uh, i i just close the wound edge very securely and give compression using elastic bandages so that the muscle mass remains stuck to the outer aspect of the ilium this dressing is there's a there's a trick to do that you stick the elastic plast on the back of your gluteal area and pull it forward and stick to the anterior abdomen so the whole flap is all the time compressed to the lateral aspect of the ilium and you need to change it once it is little loose that is every second day it needs to be changed when you change lift the elastic plast from the back and then pull it forward don't do it other way around because the flap can come up and this is this you need to do for about 3 days time the deep dissection you reflect the from the iliac crest the gluteal muscles right up to the greater sciatic notch be aware of identifying and keeping the superior gluteal nerve same this is uh, just a uh, still picture from the video uh, you have this uh, iliac crest and the anterior superior iliac tendon and posterior superior iliac spine as the landmark and you can see this is the uh, avascular white line the junction of the abdominal muscles and the hip abductors where you put your incision to release the hip abductors and uh, then gradually dissect and deflect these muscles backwards you will find under the fascia of the uh, vastus lateralis this uh, ascending branch of the lateral femoral circumflex vessel the constant vessel you need to identify and ligate one point about it this vessel takes anastomosis with the superior gluteal vessel so we are discussing about uh, i think uh, 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 nikhil was telling about the rupture of the vessels uh, superior gluteal vessel in, in case you have a rupture superior gluteal vessel when you are going through this approach and you ligate this one you can expect massive necrosis of the hip abductors so there has been a study from china where they did uh, every case they did angio preoperatively to find out and if they had a injury in the superior gluteal vessel they avoided this approach but the same has been uh, tried by mark relly and he has published consecutively done in 40 cases he found not a single case where he had this uh, superior gluteal vessel injury so he has abandoned doing this uh, uh, angiography i think uh, dr joel mata marvin dial david helfred mark tiley they have published 400 cases and they did not have a single case where the superior gluteal vessel was injured and in my experience i have done about 100 cases so far uh, I, in my experience i have i injured one vessel it was not injured earlier while dissecting i injured the superior gluteal vessel so this is a point you must know and then you do an osteotomy of the 
either you do tenotomy of the gluteus minimus and medius then you have to mark them separately so that you don't suture it wrongly when you close but i prefer to do a uh, greater trochanter osteotomy which gives me better exposure and better fixation of, after surgery and once you have done this uh, osteotomy uh, then you go back to the rotators take out the piriformis and the uh, uh, short rotators and the gluteus maximus from their insertion like you do for a kl approach and then the whole of the outer aspect of the innovated bone is before you and you can do your reduction what with using all your tools and then do your internal fixation and then finally you close this is one of those standard wounds this wound looks very big actually this is the exposure you need to get a good reduction you see uh, you see the, i have put some intra osseous sutures here this was again in 2007 or 2008 i have thought doing it it is not helpful you, this is very cumbersome and doesn't help so we'll see some cases this is a 17 days old 26 uh, years old male this is a abc fracture with uh, uh, supra acetabular dome impaction supra this is the one which i showed you in the picture this has been reduced you can use a large femoral distract to reduce this fracture and once it is anatomically reduced you have to look for small pieces of bone which may be missing which may be attached to the muscles over it so that you put them back to place never try to squeeze the space in between the bone thinking that you are trying to do a reduction actually you can do a mal reduction of the acetabulum by doing that if there is a missing piece of bone allow that space to be left open without any uh, attempt to close them and this is what uh, as a 12 years now it is uh, now it is 16 years follow up this person broke his tibia and he came so this person uh, you see you have absolute anatomical reduction of the hip joint this is a lady who's 23 years old and, uh, and 23 days old fracture which a tractor run over by a tractor second 26 year old laborer and she had this injury and you see she also has a sacral sore and uh, bladder rupture this is how this this on my left you can see when you expose uh, the type of uh, condition of the uh, mal mal united uh, fracture with the head of the femur looking at it and when you do this reduction uh, you get an anatomical reduction and this is what we ignored we tried to create a roof so that the lady can walk you see uh, if you look at ma uh, when you treat when you see some patients with mata's roof arc reference 45 degree you think you are not treating them operatively if you cannot get a global reduction of the acetabulum try to get that 45 degree all right get a good roof which will give stability and there's the, the head of the femur should be congruous with that so in this case we attempted to do that so she had reasonable function this is a 23 days old fracture in a 56 year old male and you see we debrided in the periphery the callus and when it closed anatomically in the periphery you see what happened this piece of bone was removed during debrima and the acetabulum opened up inside and you have an incongruous hip joint so when you see this in the cr you revise your fixation and give space for the missing bone and once you have done that this is the space which was missing you get a congruous hip joint and you see this patient at the end of one year this was open in the periphery so this was the space and this is at the five years and this gentleman i recently asked him to send some pictures he has sent his pictures this is a big exposure from the left femoral approach so he has a normal function so complications you can get wound infections hip abductor necrosis if you have a supraglutal artery injury heterotrophic ossifications don't have much problem with this one and i really don't have abductor weakness patients and of course this injury of the supraglutal vessel is not because of the approach because of the uh, exposure when you do complexity of the fractures actually are responsible the type of fractures you do twins approach are complex and they add to the complications so unfortunately the approach gets blamed are you able to see this video pradeep pradeep no we are hello. not able to see it hello we are not able to see sir pradeep can you see this video so we are seeing only the blank screen Anybody hearing? Nikhil, sir, I, sir, I, we are we are seeing only the blank screen. 
Yeah, we can't, I can't see the video. So I am the only one who's listening to it. Huh? Yeah, I can't see it. Maybe you can, if the video is stored somewhere as a file, you can try and use it that way. So this is the supreme gluteal vessel which was ruptured and uh, we had to ligate it and see this is the uh -huh. spike from the uh, myelinated fracture which is so close to this vessel and it can really rupture this is a very sharp spike and when you dissect you should dissect taking care of the vessel you should dissect at the edge of the greater sciatic notch this is what i wanted to show you so the advantage of this approach it is it gives an excellent exposure for complex fractures a single approach to reach both the columns it allows direct reduction on the vision and a higher rate of reduction allows safe dislocation of the hip for intraarticular reduction it's the only approach to expose the avis fracture extending to the sacroiliac joint and it's the best exposure for lately presenting avis fractures drawbacks it has got risk of complications and there is a learning curve and fractures medial to iliotracheal eminence cannot be approached to this so take home messages lately presenting avis fractures are not uncommon and you can treat them with this approach in some acute conditions avc fractures with extension to sacroiliac joint should be treated like this with this approach it is highly useful, useful for widely displaced avc fractures avc fractures with extended posterior wall and comminuted high posterior column fractures in avc and i have added this the low avc fracture with severe comminution i think they are best treated in my hand with this approach it gives superior quality of reduction and it's very beneficial for younger population when you have young people if you leave them slightly in malunion they get into early arthritis and may end up with a dhr so if you go by this approach you can get an absolute anatomical reduction by doing an arthrotomy and checking the reduction yourself but if any acetabular fracture can be reduced anatomically by other approaches you may not use this approach because of the higher risk of complications so some recommendations i think some lead trauma surgeons should be doing this and this must be emphasized equally like other approaches that is what you are patronizing you are asking me to speak on every meeting on this i don't know whether it's helping anybody and in india in the younger population sustaining complex pelvic acetabular injury presenting late this is an approach of the bad weather if you if you don't do this approach try to do with other approaches stand up with mal union probably we are not doing justice to the patient so is a man got to do what a man got to do this is an approach which is necessary everyone thank you all thank you very much sir it was a great overview and we look forward to our if approaches if you wish to have some video i can show you but subject to availability of time yeah we have a webinar on but if i am not able to hear anybody coming up am i deaf i don't sir, know uh, Are you able to hear me, Pradeep? Yeah, sir. Uh, Doctor Pranav is speaking. Are you able to hear him? Everybody has. Are you able to hear me? No. No, everybody is awake. Can't hear anybody. Check your. Uh, check. You, uh, sir, your uh, headphone is. Yes. Check. check your headphone. Disconnect your headphone and see if the speaker of. <coughs> Are you able to hear us now? Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, I had I had muted uh, on the <laughs> laptop. <laughs> right. Okay. So uh, the pre presentation. Was, did you manage to see the presentation? Yes, sir. Yes. Now okay. are you able to hear us? Are you yeah. able to hear us? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. I'm, actually, I was checking my ear whether something has gone wrong with my ear. So oh, yes. you were you were working like Arjuna. You were so focused on your that eye of the bird, you could not see anything else. Okay, before we move to one case with uh, Doctor Pradeep, I have two questions for Doctor Das. Yeah, First okay. is uh, I will uh, echo the question which was put forward by Abhay. How okay. frequently you are doing this for fresh case? And second is that. Uh, whether you do a hip dislocation and see intraarticularly the alignment. Okay. Okay. I. I. 
for for ab for abc fractures low abc fractures and for complex transrectal transverse fractures for transverse fracture with posterior wall fracture and for fractures extending to sacroiliac joint in a fresh situation i do this it's very comfortable actually actually it's a pleasure to do this because you don't struggle you just expose and do the reduction and close it so i do that uh, so that is my first uh, question answer to the first question second one you said uh, i'm sorry please, please dislocation. this location do you dislocate the hip and uh, see inside uh, of course i do i do especially uh, in late cases when there are intra articular malunions i dislocate i break the bridge intra articular malunion bridge before i can make the reduction and pranab uh, you, if you wish to do it you have somebody in ahmedabad who was my last fellow who spent about two and a half years with me and he he is very capable of doing this also so you can just start doing it on your own i mean i mean i'm not saying that you should do it but this is uh, it's a very good uh, i i'm very happy doing it in the active cases also so i will ask the name of that person on your phone and then you will let me know oh, okay oh, 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 oh. okay let's move to the cases by dr pradeep sir will you stop your yes. screen sharing i done it okay okay so um, we don't have much time so uh, we will just discuss one case uh, and this is the case which was it is still need to be operated in fact my good friend dr arga has uh, um, got this case and um, he is going to operate this case uh, soon uh, so uh, let's see how much discussion we can churn out on this case so i am going to put this case here yeah so this case is yet to be managed so uh, this case is been posted uh, after one or two days so let's see so this is a case a gentleman in their in late 40s maybe and uh, now this is the kind of injury he has uh, come up with um, that's the x ray unfortunately i have only the ap x ray at this point uh, with me and uh, these are the ct scans so this is the uh, one uh, there are few views and these are the another few views so uh, uh i'll i'll start with the order in which uh, we are uh, taking let's a, start uh, with sen sir because he has been silent for a long time yes sir <laughs> sir Next. yes sir so pa pathoanatomically what are the things you would like for us to pick up from this yeah um, if you look at this picture over there uh, yeah the right upper picture over there you can find it out that there is a reasonable amount of a opening up medially Mm -hmm. and there is a vertically up shifting of, of the anterior uh, column as such the anterior column fragment also so mm -hmm. definitely you need to analyze that part if you see posteriorly you tend to see a reasonable amount of a comminution in the column area not in the wall area mm -hmm. but in the column area yeah. so posteriorly column is bad anteriorly the medial side is bad so in this kind of a situation you need to really assess so what i do is before really doing under anesthesia we try to see whether we are able to get the reduction of the posterior column or not so anyway i'll start anteriorly in this case give a traction and probably with the ip approach we'll try to get with a little window surely so because we have to push that anterior column fragment down there so with the traction and after pushing that window down there i'll hold it i mostly do pass two thick k wires from anterior inferior spine towards the uh, ilium ilio ilial wires just as a temporary purchase and thereafter try to look from the medial side from the stopas approach to get a uh, reduction of the fragments if there is an impaction to take care of the impaction fragment and to push the rest of the fragments back to their position so once these both things are done thereafter i'll definitely have a plate up and a plate medially in this kind of a situation so if the posterior column is reduced it's well otherwise i might have to take care of that also which i can see from the inside also because of the uh, reasonable amount of the posterior column can be seen from inside as a you know i am not very sure about the posterior wall the posterior side there is a small fragment also which has tilted down so one needs to really care, take care of that part so so in summary sir you will take a uh, means both the approaches here Most I start with the anterior approach with little window. Ah, 
so uh, any, anything other uh, things sir uh, cp uh, cpdas sir yes i, I think uh, i'll do it differently i'll this is a very good case for uh, me to do through uh, this extended ilocumbal approach uh, i would uh, i i just want to know how much uh, below the pectinal line it has come up is it at the ilopectinal line or has gone beyond that so the, the so the the uh, the posterior column combination you are meant to say actually i would yeah. start there i would start there i think uh, there is it is very well described by, by dr david helpert that uh, the commutative fragment which you are seeing in the back uh, i think that's the strongest piece of bone yeah. uh, in the whole construct and if you put that back exactly in the right uh, uh, orientation in the uh, anatomical reduction that become the measuring rod for rest of it so you, you get the pelvis into its original place and uh, so i would start uh, going through the extended ilofemoral approach fix the back first and then do dr sen's asi osteotomy go to the front and try by the time this would have reduced because uh, I, i what i do i put a, a sand spin in the thickest part of the sciatic buttress one and one in the along the neck of femur and use the femoral distract to jack it out so the whole thing gets reduced so i fix this one with two lats to and then a plate probably there is a imploding sort of injury here in the posterior wall i'll check that and then i go to the uh, asi osteotomy and try to fix this one this is how i'll do it pradeep yes yes hello so i mean based on what i can see i think your anterior column fracture into the iliac crest looks incomplete to me yeah So right. those fractures are quite difficult to reduce unless you actually osteotomize the iliac crest. Mm -hmm. So that is the first thing you have to osteotomize it and reduce it anteriorly. The second point is, uh, based on the CT scan, the posterior view, the rim of the acetabulum is not too bad, but the posterior column fracture extends to the posterior border of the posterior column, and it is almost like a segmental fracture. Yeah. And there is a separate fragment that is mal rotated. in the apex of the greater sciatic notch correct so the iliac fragment that attaches to the sacrum and the posterior column fragment that is continuous with the anterior column fragment there is that mal rotated fragment yeah. and i don't think you can get that fragment only anteriorly so i'll probably use a dual approach go anterior first osteotomize the anterior column reduce everything from the front mobilize a little bit of the posterior column as best as i can but not perform any fixation but just to correct the derotation and then go separately posteriorly um reduce and fix those two uh, fragments it's is behaving like a segmental posterior column fracture yeah. and then fix that from the back i think that uh, notorious uh, greater sciatic notch piece which rotates in three uh, planes and goes there is very difficult, difficult as you see yeah, yeah the, that the, is the, very difficult yeah the again, this is one this is one where in all likelihood if your superior gluteal artery has already not been damaged mm -hmm. then i am confident that i will damage it oh yeah <laughs> so it's one of yeah. those where you want to prophylactically get it yeah so um, dr acharya you you are take on that piece that particular piece uh, that get a sciatic notch piece yeah so my take on this so i i you know if that piece wasn't there i would have gone my my usual plan is to go anterior fix the anterior column bring the posterior column in and then if i need to do a second approach i do a posterior approach but with when you have this fragment that sciatic notch fragment and it's rotated i agree i think that needs to be put back once that's put back that will give that's like your keystone once that yeah. keystone has been put back it gives you that that column length um and it restores that anatomy so so i agree i would probably go posterior first um try and get that back and then and then go anterior so i think all faculties have picked up that uh, uh, give a lot of importance to that greater sciatic notch though uh, everybody has a different way of addressing to that particular uh, dr sain sir wants to go anteriorly and uh, Uh, doctor uh, uh, yes sir yes sir yes sir hello 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 big the same which is 
reflected from the outside this is part but the upper part you see it's much inside yeah. and it's a long continuous fragment coming to interior side yeah so till we uh, dr sains uh, net is not good or my net is not good no 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 my net is bad okay. my net is bad is that okay yeah now now we can hear sir uh, what i'm saying is that if you look that fragment from outside and inside yeah you see this fragment is not a very small fragment posteriorly mm. yeah. a longer extension medially mm -hmm. so till you do not derotate it from medial side it will be very difficult to get it from outside also yeah so, so uh, yeah for me this displacement is a rotational displacement of this fragment mm -hmm. and till we do not take the head away and derotate it the posterior side will not come back to its position i agree completely with dr sain i think the anterior side will take care of most of the problems and if that posterior wall sort of uh, is not very bothersome then i think we can do just by external iliofemoral or uh, just by uh, routine iliofemoral approach and uh, stopa yeah so yeah so so the take home message is that uh, um, uh, if, number one thing is that uh, the derotation of that fragment is very important and uh, when one must plan their uh, approach to get to that fragment and try to derotate it so that because otherwise the posterior column will get locked and will not be able to put it in a right rotation so uh, uh, just before we part uh, uh, this is a typical uh, notorious sciatic buttress piece case uh, so we have treated one such case so i'm going to skip to that i'm going to go to another uh, a, a similar representative case so if you uh, see the say similar case here and we can see that greater sciatic notch it's a much bigger piece here it has come and lodged anteriorly and uh, this is the um, uh, view how which what how we can get from the stopa approach so we can see only this much part of the piece and really we cannot uh, 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 basically manipulate it because it, it though it seems free it is very uh, jam packed and we cannot move it back from the uh, stopa and this kind of the view that we trying to get it from the iliofemoral approach that we see only one edge so if you see in this diagram we can see just that edge of this but good part of uh, the iliofemoral approach is that we can put our strong uh, asymmetrical clamp and we try we can derotate that fragment so you know i had this case ready for dual approach uh, though I, i as i said in the last time also whenever i have dual approach i will expose the anterior first uh, so uh, i expose the anterior try to see and then with this um, um, by prong dhs pusher i try to push it down and once it push it down it become free and then with the uh, asymmetric clamp um, i try to lateralize it and then it got lateralized and then uh, rest of the thing becomes uh, very easy to fix so uh, and once one screw again uh, i try to take purchase into that fragment and uh, thus that fragment towards a uh, uh, fix so uh, i think uh, uh, the take home message here is that that piece uh, all treatment management plan uh, needs to be uh, uh, targeted towards managing that piece and then everything will fall back in place so with that i have a question yes sir i have a question uh, that fragment is smaller than the one you showed Okay. Yeah. And it, how do you fix that fragment? So, that fragment yeah. is on the edge. How, if yeah. you have to fix, you have to fix with some lag screw or whatever. Yeah. How do you fix that width? Sir, so, uh, I just show. So. The one first case. Yeah. How do you fix? Yeah. That, the the first this the the supra pectinal plate uh, screw can take care of that man. One one or two screw can come into that area. So if you are like Arjun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look at <laughs> look at yeah. the you yeah. know look at look so, at so the even the even our posterior column screw we tend to go towards the ischial spine so i, so, I think i think pradeep i will yeah. disagree that fragment yeah. needs to be anatomically reduced yeah if it has to be anatomically reduced yeah. you need to go posterior fix it with something you, yeah. you can't indirectly fix it you have to really fix it uh, i just want to ask the rest of the faculty mm. please how do you fix yeah. this one sir if you look at the uh, head of the femur and that is the area where the three fragments they confluent they are getting together in that area so if that anterior column that that portion of sciatic notch piece and rest of the posterior column if all these three come together at that place like a t 
if we can get all these three aligned over there we can do it only by the uh, lateral window i mean iliofemoral with stopa and then we can put interfragmentary screws from 1 to 2 to 2 uh, 1 to 3 if you can consider the posterior column as a sciatic piece 2 and the remaining posterior column 3 then from 1 to 2 and 1 to 3 we can pass screws we can put spring plate lot of things we can do do you think yeah, we are doing this is this is doctor, the reduction from peripheral to the center yeah dr das i agree with you i think that little piece has to be reduced anatomically yes now the most important finding for me over here apart from the sciatic piece is the incomplete fracture of the iliac vein yes. when you have an incomplete fracture of an s shaped bone effectively the bones are twisted yeah so if your base is twisted when you turn it around in a posterior approach you cannot get that sciatic piece to reduce to both sides yeah you can get it reduced to one side or the other side because of the s shaped uh, twisting and that's why the anterior approach first to osteotomize the fragment reduce it accurately yeah so it's like you know your 4 to 3 3 to 2 2 to 1 yeah so you build your foundation anteriorly but don't over fix it don't use long screws loosely fix it then go posteriorly mm. and then you've got your v shaped uh, gap of the anterior column fragments and then your sciatic piece will uh, slot into that but if that is not reduced then i don't think in my hands i could fix it from the front so uh, i think uh, just to uh, emphasize dr shah's point uh, we uh, i was not going to show this case but uh, just to emphasize this point Uh, the same similar case here the piece is gone much more medial and that is what is latonal has described that piece goes and it, here again we can see that chaotic uh, buttress piece this patient had uh, some uh, superior gluteal coiling done so um, again it was very difficult to uh, uh, reduce that piece so um, in this case again dual approach was taken and uh, i had reduced that piece and fixed it from posteriorly also so if you can see uh, anterior yeah. and posteriorly both uh, the uh, the Uh, this thing was fixed sorry this uh, this is not this is the case um, i got some slight jumble this is the post of that patient post of that patient so if you can see that uh, we have one one plate like this and uh, the another plate going like this over the sciatic notch taking uh, purchase into the uh, supra uh, superior to the uh, um, uh, sciatic notch below the superior gluteal now and i had done gt osteotomy here chevron gt osteotomy uh, for that uh, to go by, back and then again entirely one one screw and this thing and this is around 15 months follow up of this patient so uh, yeah so i think that brings us to the end today we are uh, thankful to all our uh, faculty who have spared their valuable time and uh, shared their knowledge with us uh, these seven uh, uh, eopas uh, webinars have by and large taken care of all the important fracture patterns and we have built up a very good library now we have two and a half hours seven sessions of detailed discussion on each fracture and with uh, experts and their cases and anybody can refer to that by visiting our eopas channel so i think even though we were not able to do a proper eopas annual conference this year we have built up something for the future thanks to all of you and uh, i would like to take this opportunity to mention that we will have our next session of various interfragmentary screws that we can do in the sawm fracture patterns and uh, some of you will be a part of that session also i am trying to get as many newcomers as possible on the uh, session so that uh, we also build up a good uh, base of our speakers so thanks all of you on behalf of eopas and uh, i think dr pradeep can now stop the live yeah. and we can still continue our chat if we want to yeah. so, so.